Bernie Sanders and Hillary Clinton presented very different visions of what the Democratic Party would offer voters in the coming US presidential elections. And at time of recording, it looks like Hillary's going to get the nomination. Which poses a very interesting philosophical question for Bernie fans, and indeed all of us who live in democracies. When nobody on the ballot represents you, should you vote for the candidate you dislike the least, or just stay out of it altogether? Some people say that we should vote for the lesser of two evils. If your candidate didn't get the nomination, well then you should still vote for their party anyway, because at least they'll be better than the opposition, right? So assuming, perhaps simplistically, that Bernie fans would rather Donald Trump not become president, the person who makes this argument says that the best way to avoid that is to vote Hillary. This argument might also apply to voting for third party candidates, like the Greens, which is an option, although the Hillary fan would say that the Greens aren't likely to win based on previous elections, or at least not as likely to win as the Democrats are. So the best way to avoid the Trump presidency scenario is to avoid splitting the left wing vote and go for Hillary. This idea is very utilitarian. Utilitarianism is the position that actions are good if they maximise utility, where utility usually means some form of well-being. In the no-win voting scenario, the utilitarian says you should choose the option that maximises utility of the options available to you. Yes, you can be sad that there isn't another choice that would provide even greater utility, but that doesn't mean that you can't or shouldn't do some small amount of good with what you've got. Just to be clear, the question here is not, is Hillary the lesser of two evils? The question is, should you vote for the lesser of two evils? Is that the principle that should guide you? Because there might be alternative principles. Utilitarianism is very concerned with consequences, but you could take a different approach. Hillary does have a history of supporting aggressive imperialist foreign policy, which is to say killing people in Iraq, Libya, Syria, Yemen, among others, and her approach to economics has been criticised by those left of her as well. Some people might say that if that's what she's going to do as president, they don't want to be implicated in that. In The Ethics of Voting, philosopher Jason Brennan argues that you should be justified in believing that your candidate will promote the common good. Voters might disagree on what the common good is, and they might turn out to be wrong about which candidate will promote it, but if you are going to vote, he thinks you have a responsibility to make sure you vote for something. The upshot for Bernie fans would be that if they really don't think Hillary would be a good president, Brennan would say they should abstain. 18th century Prussian philosopher Immanuel Kant would agree, especially if Bernie fans thought that Hillary might do morally wicked things as president. Kant famously argued that if a murderer came to your door and asked to know where your children are in order to murder them, it would actually be wrong to lie to him. Kant thinks that if somebody else is going to do something evil, the moral guilt for that is all on them. Better to just keep your hands clean. If you'd like to know more about Kant, I've done a video on him before, you can see it by clicking that card that's just appeared in the top right. And you can kind of see how Kant has a point, right? I mean, is it okay for me to play a role in killing two innocent people if it'll prevent somebody else from killing five innocent people? <sighs> At the very least, the answer to that question isn't clearly yes. Ultimately though, Hillary fans are going to come back and say that you have to be pragmatic in your political ambitions. This harkens back to a tradition called realpolitik, or real politics, an approach to political problems where you consider only what's on the table, not what you'd like to be on the table. Trouble is though, realpolitik is a darned convenient ideology for those who benefit from the status quo. It would be nice if we could agree that what is on the table politically is basically fine, but often radical political movements are born out of a realisation that actually some things are really not fine and we might need to change a lot of stuff. Some people have suggested that going Bernie or bust is quite a privileged position to take, given that many of the people who might be harmed by a Trump presidency are already members of oppressed minorities, and yeah, that might be true. On the other hand though, it kind of silences the voices of those who are themselves members of oppressed minorities and still are saying Bernie or bust. It doesn't really touch the Kantian argument, 
and it might be worth remembering that some oppressed minorities might not do too well under a Clinton presidency either. You might be unsurprised to hear at this point that this question is very, very difficult to answer. I don't really think it's my place to tell anyone what they should do here. It seems to me everyone's got to decide for themselves how much skin they've got in the game and how much they want to risk. And anyway, I'm English and God knows we've got our own political problems to deal with right now. But what I can do is tell you the list of questions that you would need to answer first in order to attempt a solution at the no-win voting scenario. Firstly, you're going to have to decide on a theory of ethics. Whether you're utilitarian, Kantian or something else, you're going to have to decide what is good, morally and practically. Secondly, you're going to have to decide whether doing harm is morally worse than allowing harm to happen. That's going to help you figure out whether abstaining and potentially letting the opposition win, who might harm people, is an okay option. Thirdly, you're going to have to make the very best attempt you can to figure out which way of voting or not voting will maximise whatever you've decided is good. Finally, you're going to have to check your answers to see whether they might have been affected by any kind of bias, mistakes, missing information, political spin, or the candidates themselves who will be trying to persuade you to answer question three in their favour. Once you've done all that, you can make your way freely to the polling station and presumably collect your philosophy prize along the way. And to all of my American friends and fans and everybody around the globe who's likely to be affected by this coming election, Godspeed. Subscribe to get new videos about philosophy from me directly into your eyeballs. This episode was crowdfunded, so a big thank you to all of these names and to my new supporter, Vespere Sebastian Oaks, whose name I probably just butchered. Sorry about that. Thank you very much to all of you, and you can help keep the show alive at patreon.com slash philosophytube.